So, uh, as most of you know, I recently got this super dope truck out there, uh, that Chevy, big orange Chevy out there. And there's quite a cool testimony behind it that I want to share, and it's all going to kind of tie in at the end. But um, so I was shopping, I was like, decided I was going to sell my Mustang, and I was like, you know, it's a car, I'll be able to get get something better later on. I, I'm just, I'm ready for a truck. I'm ready for a truck. I had everything in mind of what kind of truck I wanted down to the detail, right? And I always loved the look of the old cars, the old trucks, but everyone I'd find is just it's too old. There, there's always like several, several things wrong with it. And I'm like, not really worth the Mustang. And so I was shopping around and I was starting to like settle for different things. Um, and trying to get people to trade for the Mustang or whatever because the Mustang wasn't quite selling as fast as I thought. And we had been praying about it and thinking about it and it was, fr it was getting frustrating. And uh, then this, this one, that Chevy pops up and I was like, oh, what the heck, this is cool. And it, it was everything I wanted and it was just that immediate, like you wanted it so bad, like your stomach hurt. Like you just, you were so excited for it but you didn't even have it yet, don't know the details. And so I start messaging the dude and he put me on a cliffhanger right right before I go to bed. He's like, "Yeah, let me think about uh, let me think about trading for the Mustang because I still had the Mustang." I was like, "Oh, let's go! He's gonna do it!" Like, I was so excited, telling my mom and dad about it, all this stuff. I wake up in the morning, I have a text. He's like, "Yeah, I just can't put a Ford next to my Chevys because he rebuilds cars and stuff." I was like, "Are you kidding me? This is really the reason?" And so um, I was talking to my dad. I looked at my dad when that happened. I was like. I have to figure out how to get this truck. I have to. And I figured out a way to make it work where I could cover it for the truck and have both at the time until my Mustang could sell. And I was so excited, but uh, you see, I obviously have it now. But what, the weird thing about it was um, it was listed at a way higher price than what I got it for, and I started doing my bargaining piece. Like, and then he realized, oh, this is a young kid. I could try and get more money out of him. And uh, he starts, we had been jerked around a ton with this whole truck stage. People saying they'll meet us and they won't. Um, talk Like all this just in several, several times. So we were just like, we were starting to agree on a price. And uh, um, he's like, starts, starts jerking us around again. And he's, so he's like, no, this is my price for, uh, I, we settled on a price. I was like, okay, so we'll tomorrow work or whatever. And he's like, no, man, sorry, the, that price is for today, so you have to come out here and meet me today. He's all the way in El uh, Elma. El Elma, yeah, not Ellensburg, Elma. And so that's like almost Ocean Shores. He's like, you got to come out here today. The price is today. I'm like, and we're going back and forth, and I look at my dad, and I'm just going to tell on you for a minute. My dad, <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't get angry very much. Like, he, he, he doesn't. He's a very calm person. He's kind of that straight line, like, good foundation. He's, he's a great dad, but he was like, he was like, dude, this is making me so mad. Like, no, we're not going to mess with this guy. This guy doesn't know what's going on. He's just going to mess with us. He thinks he can just, you know, pick on us right now. Like, we're not even going to worry about this. And I'm sitting here like agreeing with him, but at the same time, I want the truck so bad that it's like, <laughs> come on, like, let's still work it out. Like, I didn't care if I was getting jerked around. And dad's like, no, this, we're, we're done with this. And so then all of a sudden, uh, and he and he's yeah he's just like this is a punk guy he's not he's not gonna help us out whatsoever, and then the dude just randomly because my mom was like just say this response so I said I have this amount I'll I'll pay this amount but I I can't get the money today the bank is closed I have this amount I can meet you tomorrow end of story and just left it at that and the way he was talking to us before I was like he's it's not gonna happen and so. Um, then all of a sudden, he asks a super random question. And he says, are you a Christian? And the way he was talking before, I promise you, I would never guess that was coming out of his mouth. And um, dad looks at me like he stops mid-sentence after like, this guy's a punk. And he stops and goes, and looks at me. And I look at him. And he's like, and my mom's across the table, what's going on? What's going on? And, and I look at my dad. And he's like, so how are you going to respond? And... Uh, I was like, uh, I mean, what the Bible tells us to do. You, you're, I'm not gonna deny nothing. So I was like, I was like, uh, yes, I am. He, it, like, two minutes go by. He immediately responds with, "Okay, this is the price. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll hold it for you." I was like, 
whoa, like every ball just dropped, all this stuff. I was like, that's so weird, but I was so excited. It, it's one of those things like in the moment, like now telling you, you guys are like, yeah, that's how God works. But in the, in the moment right there, I was just like mouth open, jaws dropped, like, wow, God loves me so much. This is crazy. And um, so that all worked out, and it, it was really awesome. The dude ended up running a, a Christian business and stuff, but uh, we got to talk about God a little bit with him, and it ended up being really cool. And uh, comes around, now I'm trying to sell the Mustang, and it's, it's super hard. I had several guys, oh, yeah, I'll buy it, hold it for him. Oh, I can't do it, man, I'm sorry. Or there's this, so there's this young guy that was going to get it in the military, and um, he, he was... Uh, he, he was so excited. He was like my age, but didn't even have his license. We didn't even find out until we met him. But uh, he was going to try and test drive it with a permit and stuff. So we had to go. It was just weird. But he gave me some money to hold it for him for like a week till some of his friends could pay him back some money that he owed. And uh, he was so excited, like the, exci the excitedness that I had when I got it. And I was so excited I was going to someone I knew would take care of it. Meanwhile, he's like, uh, burning the clutch with smoke coming out during the test drive. It, it was bad. But um, so I hold it for him, and then he's trying everywhere just to take it home, like, without paying at first. And I almost wanted to do it, but we didn't. And then he responds the day he was supposed to do it. I'm, I come out of football practice, and he calls me. He's like, uh, he's, he calls me crying. He's like, I'm sorry, man, I can't do this. And he's, like, just about to kill himself. Like, just everything in life is just going downhill. And... The cool story with that part is I talked him out of committing suicide, which you never know who you meet people, why you meet, or why you meet people for a certain reason. You never know. So I'm trying not to be angry because I was excited to sell my Mustang, but instead I'm talking about a suicide, and it was great how God works. And so then someone on my team, I'm still trying to sell the Mustang. I have this truck. Um, I'm, I'm really tight on money right now because I could try to do it a weird way, and uh, there, there's, there's this guy on my team, and he decided he was thinking about it. And uh, they saw the Mustang. They're like, I think we're going to pass. We're looking for something a little cheaper. And I get in the car. I'm like, Lord, please, just when I start this up, let them hear it and come on over. Started it up. Comes right over to the window. They're like, actually, I think we want to check it out. And I was like, let's go. And what's really cool about that is they ended up buying the Mustang. And the testimony with that is this kid is a sophomore kid, smile ear to ear, uh, just like I was. And he lost his dad last year from blood clots in the lungs, and uh, they were planning on building a Mustang together. So what's really cool about that is just how God works um, and how uh, I was waiting for so long, getting frustrated. And my point with this is sometimes some of you might be waiting for something, might be waiting, and it feels like God's not hearing you, or it feels like it's so far away, or it's not going to happen. And you're like, man, this is getting frustrated. You start to get frustrated or you start to get disappointed. And then, no, I know, I was frustrated too. But then all of a sudden, God works in weird ways. It flips around all of a sudden. It's like, whoa, thank you, Jesus. Like, like it's here. It's just, it's about being patient and staying in prayer and staying faithful to God. And, and you know he'll pull through. One way or another, it's all his big picture plan. You know, like, everything I just told you guys was within, like, three months, it felt like, or whatever. And that's a long time. So sometimes some of you, I'm sure, are waiting for something that's even way longer than that. And you don't, uh, it's, it's God's plan, right? So uh, I have just a couple verses to go off of with that. So when it came, I, I was supposed to share this when I talked about the truck thing, but um, uh, when the guy was like, are you a Christian? We could have so, he was jerking us around in a way I could have so e easily just ignored him or whatever, but I was going to stand up like God tells us to do, and uh, it says right here on uh, Matthew ten thirty three. but everyone who denies, denies me here on earth, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. So I, why, why would I say I'm not a Christian? There's no reason not to. I, I say it. Look what happened. It's awesome. God rewarded that. Uh, leads me into Revelations 3, 8. And um, it says, I know all the things you do, and I have opened a door for you that no one can close. You have little strength that you obeyed my word, and you did not deny me. He'll, he's going to test you. He's going to put you through things where you're like, you're like, all right, this is kind of sketch. And you just stay steadfast and hold on to your word and God will pull you through it, right? Just like that. Just stick to what you know. 
Um, and then the last one is Proverbs 16, 9, where it says, we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. So here I am trying to force things. And meanwhile, God had this overall plan the whole time that just ended up being a big testimony and planting seeds for people. So, yeah, let, uh, let's, go, let's go be uh, God's people today, and, and let's go plant some seeds.